Okay, we are live. So I'm here today to demonstrate some features which are under proposal, so they haven't been approved yet in Python 3.8. Python 7 only just got released, um, what was two weeks ago now, so it's what the middle of, where are we, the middle of June. Uh, Python 3.8 is not scheduled to at least come out in beta until early 2019 and then um, a stable release mid 2019 so mid next year there's quite a few proposals or peps as they're known um, in the new version of python and uh, what i've done is basically just got a custom branch of the c python source code and merged in two peps pep 572 and pep 505 PEP 572, I guess, is the one which is showing signs of probably being approved. Um, so where are we up to? Um, and I'm going to demonstrate what that is about. So PEP 572 is known as assignment expressions. Um, and all of the examples I've seen online have been pretty confusing. So I'm just going to walk through, I guess, some of the basics. Now, you've got two... Um, kind of types of statements in Python there's you can have a simple statement where you assign something and you can have an expression where you compare something putting those two things together is actually quite tricky so if I just show you for example we have a, a variable called a and we assign it a value of one that doesn't return anything um, which is why in the REPL you just get the next line whereas if I say a then it's going to return the value of a which is one so the syntax in PEP 572 is to introduce a new operator, which is like this. And basically what it does is the two statements um, that I just showed you before. So it's equivalent to saying A equals one, return A. So why would you want to do that? Um, so there are a bunch of statements in Python where you want to do both assignment and also have an expression. For example, um, let's do the most basic one, I guess, is a while loop. So in Python, you can say, whilst a is less than 10, uh, print a and then a increment. So that'll increment the number from one to nine. That's pretty straightforward. Um, so there are times, I guess, when you'd actually want to Let's reset that back to one. Do something a little bit more complicated. So this is, I guess, where assignment expressions come in. So for example, you could say a becomes equal to a plus, let me focus that, a plus one. Uh, and like I said before, that returns the new value of a. So whilst that's less than 10, then print a. So that then basically is a, Pre increment a post increment operator um, and it will print the values two to nine so this is one of the reasons why python doesn't have the a plus plus or the plus plus a syntax um, is because it's never obvious to the reader whether the variable gets incremented before or after the loop um, so they generally avoid that but in this example i guess you can see how it's done so what's happening is a is getting assigned to an incremented value and then the parentheses are there because it re then returns the value of that statement, which is then the value of A. So it's saying whilst A is less than 10, and you do that evaluation after you've changed the value of A. Now, this is why this PEP, I guess, is so controversial because um, it is it feels a little bit unpythonic because you're really having to try and understand in which order the statements are being assigned. Um, other things you can do is, so for example, if it's a dictionary, um, let's do this. Let's make a really uninteresting dictionary. Um, we could have a, a list comprehension um, where within the list comprehension, we're going to introduce a new name called C for key value in a dot items if, and this is where I guess in the past you couldn't 
create new names within the if statement. So the assignment expression is where you can now do that. So similar to how we did before, we can introduce parentheses and we can say if C becomes equal to, um, let's just do it this way. I don't know. We can put an F string in there, uh, the key and the value um, is not k to two. So what's going on there? Um, so we're basically creating a new name called C and it's gonna be formatted version of the key and the value together. And if that's not equal to k two two, then put it in the list. So vowels should be k one one. So probably not the cleanest example, um, but there are other ways in which you could use this. Um, another is within an if statement. So a common thing I see is you create a, a name for the purposes of doing the if, and then within the branch, if the criteria was true, you then use the name. So this is basically where you condense those two things together. You think of an example. Um, let's say, for example, you wanted to calculate the length of a string or the, the number of files in a, in a directory. And then if the number of files is greater than one, then you'd want to go into that branch and then for each file do something. So that's, um, let's say files is, just for the sake of argument, we're going to put numbers in, not actual files. And so you'd say if len files is greater than three, um, then do this. So within, you basically go through that if branch um, and then you'd work on the name. So in this example, um, what you'd basically do instead is, I really have to think about this. I'm just so not used to using this syntax. Um, okay, so if, no, that doesn't even make sense because that's gonna then become really unreadable. No, scrap that example. Okay, so that's PEP 572. Um, as you can see, there are occasions when it could be used, but it would be used more rarely than not.